In this video, we're going to look at the role of relative sensitivity factors in quantification by XPS. And in particular, we're going to look at doublet peaks, where we have two peaks rather than a single peak generated by a photo emission process. To illustrate the use of RSFs, we'll load some data from a multi-pack file. This is a binary file in the format of an SPE file, and it contains a set of narrow scan regions that include doublets from indium, tin, aluminium and singlets from oxygen and carbon. The indium 3D provides an example of a doublet where the peaks are separated in energy and we can identify two individual peaks so we'll make use of this doublet as part of the discussion. For each doublet pair the element library includes three sensitivity factors and in the case of this indium 3D we have one that is the largest and this represents a scale factor if we use both peaks in our quantification. If on the other hand we choose to use the five halves peak we have a sensitivity factor that is smaller and that's because these RSFs are proportional to the peak area above background. So if we use the smaller peak we have yet again a smaller relative sensitivity factor. And the idea is that we should be able to quantify using either of these peaks or both of these peaks put together depending on the circumstances for a given analysis. The fact that these indium 3D peaks are well separated and the energy resolution means that we can identify two distinct peaks means that we can choose how we quantify these data based on the peak that we select and the corresponding relative sensitivity factor. On the other hand, if we consider the aluminium 2P, this is also a doublet and there are relative sensitivity factors for three different cases and in each case we could choose if we could identify the individual peaks, the appropriate RSF for a peak and quantify on that basis but if we're going to use regions alone, the only option in this case would be to use the aluminium combined doublet and the RSF for the combined doublet. We'll now perform the quantification for these data. So we're going to use this button here, which is add regions. But before I use it, I'm going to load a tile format file that gives a display that will be useful for analyzing these data. So if I select all of these VAMAS blocks before pressing this button, the Add Regions button, I then create automatically on each one of these VAMAS blocks a region and the relative sensitivity factor is brought in for each one of these. So if I click here you can see that the RSF for the Indium 3D 5 halves has been brought in and the reason it brought in the 5 halves peak is because the element transition field says indium 3d5 so the RSF corresponding to the 5 halves peak has been selected and this is appropriate because the automatic find has found the 1 half of this indium doublet and therefore the relative sensitivity factor and the region definition is consistent and this is also true for the tin. And the tin 3D is again a doublet. It also has a 5 indicated in the SN 3D5 indicating we want the 5 halves RSF. So the 5 halves RSF has been brought in. Whereas the aluminium 2P is simply aluminium 2P. So when we select this one, what we've got here is the RSF for the full interval that is to say both peaks in the doublet. Now there's only one peak in the oxygen and there's one peak in the carbon. So if we adjust these regions we end up with a potential quantification table for this particular material. One way to realize a quantification table is to use the annotation dialog window and select the quantification property page. So we can exclude position we can include, we don't need line shapes, uh, we'll, we won't include the full width half maximum and we're going to apply a quantification table to one of these VAMAS blocks. 
So we'll select the Indium 3D and the reason that, that I've selected the Indium 3D is that I have a tile that is actually displaying Indium 3D data but is set up so that it will only display annotation tables rather than the data itself. So having selected the Indium 3D and arranged for the RSFs to be included in this table and I press apply I end up with a quantification table which I can just adjust in position let's move this over here a bit the annotation is on a specific VAMAS block and the same VAMAS block is displayed here and here but this display tile only displays tables rather than the data itself and when I move a away from the annotation dialog window you can see that the table is only being displayed here and this is again a display option if I go to the display options on the tile display parameters I have the annotation is displayed in this one here whereas if I select this tile and I bring up the display parameters dialog window you can see that the annotation is not displayed here so no tables are displayed here they're only displayed in this one but no data is displayed here and that again can be seen if we look at the geometry it's telling you that the geometry is not 2D that would be an option to include the data if I just use the annotation tables then only the tables are displayed so this is a way of moving tables from a set of data defined on one specific one but including it as a separate table within a display of tiles. Back to the RSFs and you can see here that we've got a relative sensitivity factor for the Indium 3D that is giving us an amount of substance that is 1.17 as a percentage and that's based on one peak alone. If on the other hand I change the region and alter the region to include both of these peaks which I might want to do if I want to improve the signal to noise but you can see that the amount of indium has changed and what I need to do is then update the relative sensitivity factor so I specify the name in the region of indium 3D indicating the full interval and then if I press hash and return the relative sensitivity factor for the full interval is brought in and so that the amount of substance is calculated using a new relative sensitivity factor and we get pretty much the same answer so again that would be performed if we had poor signal to noise and we had access to both of these doublet peaks then using the full interval is one way of improving the precision for a quantification just to complete the discussion about doublets, if we consider a, an Indium 3D doublet then the origin of the, the splitting in energy and the relative intensity of these two peaks lies in the way that photoemission occurs. So if we consider first an oxygen 1S, the photon excites an electron in a given electron configuration that represents the ground state and produces an excited state plus an emitted electron that we record to produce this peak in the oxygen 1s spectrum. In the case of oxygen you have two equivalent electrons and when one is excited it is of no consequence to the final state energy which one of these is, is excited so we only have one excited state energy and so only a single peak is produced. On the other hand we have in the case of a d orbital we have 10 electrons and in the ground state these 10 electrons are ordered according to two different energy levels and once we excite one of these electrons we have two possible outcomes if a 5 half electron is excited then the final state ends up with an energy that is different than if we excite a 3 halves electron and the number of electrons in each one of these states determines the number of ways that we can produce these final states and hence we end up with an energy difference in the doublet and we also have a signal intensity difference that is related to the number of electrons that can be excited to the form the final state. We have six 
electrons that can be identified as 3d5 halves and we have four that are identified as 3d3 halves and since they have different energies and the number of ways we can create these states is different we end up with a ratio of six to four for these indium 3d peaks.